Thank you very much. And I would really like you to ask you to ask questions because it, there is so little of it. It makes no sense when I lose everyone. <laughs> so, and I don't have a uh, place to get. So if I don't get enough, that's fine. Far, in, far enough. Okay. So it's a joint work with, with Anton Alexeyev, Florian Neff, and Pavel Shevera. And the plan is the following. So first I will introduce a classic, yeah, an object already known for some time, Goldman Turayev Lee by Algebra. So this is a very topological object assigned to any oriented surface. And then I will also recall how the, so it's a bi-algebra, it has a bracket and a co-bracket, and the Goldman bracket so it is, is related to to the Atia bot let's say Poisson structure on the moduli space of flat connections, okay? So this is on, I will, I will use this symbol for the moduli space of flat connections. And this way the, the Goldman bracket, which is defined very topologically, acquires some kind of more geometrical meaning. But as you can see, there is no to arrive co bracket on this line. And that is, that is our work. To explain what comes, what comes here and what is the exact relationship. So let, let me start with the goldman turayev Lieb algebra. We call it A, G, T. Yesterday with you I called it G, but there will be two Gs, so maybe A is better. So, okay. So as a vector space, is described as follows. So we take a surface, sigma, which is oriented, and possibly with boundary. And then we, so we do the following thing. So A, G, T is defined as you take the space of all homotopy classes of free loops, okay? So I like So these are just homotopy classes of maps from S1 to the surface without any fixing of the base points. Okay? So you, you, yeah, and they are called free because they float around in the surface. We take our linear combinations of these things, so the vector space will be like two times this loop plus four times a different loop. And we mod out by the constant loop. Okay. Now I, I can define the bracket. So if you take two such homotopy classes, you have to choose representatives which are nice enough. And then what you do, you look at how these loops lie on the surface, and they will in general intersect somehow. Right? And you sum over all of these intersection points.
And at each sum end of this sum, so locally, the picture looks like this. So this is part of gamma 1, and this is a part of gamma 2, and this is the point P. So what you do, you replace such picture with with such picture. And sorry, they should all be oriented. And now this. And now with this orientation, you also add a sign, plus or minus. And the sign is given, so you look, the first one is, it gives you a tangent vector here. The second one gives you a tangent vector here. And you look whether these two tangent vectors give you the positive orientation or the negative orientation with respect to the orientation of the surface. Mm -hmm. There's a question. Can you just please repeat uh, what are the elements of that AGT? So the so elements will be linear, are linear combinations of homotopy classes of loops. So, um, for example, if you take the annulus as a as a surface, then you have a loop like this or a loop which goes around twice. And th this example is not very good because you can always choose representatives in such a way here that they have no intersection, so the bracket is always zero. So in this, in this special case, the bracket will be always zero. So what one, one should prove that the, that, that the bracket is independent of the homotopy of the, of the representative of the homotopy class you chose, but it's not difficult. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry? Yes, exactly. And then you get when you resolve, you get a different loop on the on the circ on the surface. So the so this is actually a le this is a Lie bracket. And it, yeah, it goes from A, G, T, which A, G, T to A, G, T. Now, I'll, now I will define another map, which will go in the op opposite way direction. So it will go from A, G, T to A, G, T, which A, G, T. And it will be defined as follows. So Again, you, you act on some, on some homotopy class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of, of course, here, you, since elements are linear combinations, you just ex extended linearly. Maybe that's what I should add to your question, but I think yeah, it was clear. Okay, so, so the bracket, the, the co-bracket, this, this one is called Turayev co-bracket, and is defined by the same formula. But you, but you sum over all self intersections. Maybe yeah, let's just call it gamma. And you do the same thing. I will not redraw it again. But maybe one point I can make here is that be before before the the resolution these arcs were connected like this so if this was one loop this part had to be connected here and this part had to be connected to this part something strange might, crazy might be happening there on the surface but you cannot connect this one to to uh yeah, sorry. Maybe just let me draw it before the the resolution. Right. F for to have just one loop, not two loops, you ne they need to be connected in this way. And in this in this case, they needed to be connected like this to have two different loops. These are the only two possibilities. You can 
you'll have, and these give you two loops, and this gives you one loop. And if you resolve this one, you get a, oops, you get a one loop. Right. And if you resolve this one, you get two loops. And you just take the wedge, and there is again a sign by the same rule, whether they, whether the, let's say this is, if this is the first one and this is the second one, it depends on the orientation of the, of these two tangent vectors at that point. Mm, so, it's a wedge product. So, so if you change the order, you get minus sign, but you also get a different sign here from the orientation. So it's well-defined element of wedge. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can you can you just give an example? So, say we take the torus mm -hmm. with two loops. One is going like in this round. One is going like this. So they have one. Oh, wait. Ah, and now um, you do the first thing with the Lie bracket of these two, so you get one big loop, I guess. Mm -hmm. And now you compute the delta of that one. What would happen then? Mm, okay, so let's do the computation. So I will draw the torus like this. Okay. So this will be the torus, and we will have the two loops. So if this is gamma 1 and this is gamma 2, then if you look in this point, and we, we imagine that the orientation is, is like this, then, the, then gamma 1, gamma 2 is positively oriented. So bracket of these two will be just plus of these, of these two, these two, but this is the constant loop up to homotopy. So in this case, this is zero. But for example, if it was a once punctured torus, then it would not be zero, but it would be the loop that goes around the puncture. Okay. But then, if for example, if yeah, if we looked at this. Uh, Now, if we wanted to apply the core bracket, it would just give zero because there are no self-intersections. Yeah, so you can take such such loop. And now if we, yeah, maybe we'll get zero, I don't know. Let's try. Yeah, yeah, okay, so let's just zoom in. Okay, so the resolution of this crossing will be like this. So we get zero because this is something which does itself, for example. But if it were, went around multiple times, yeah, we, I think we would not get zero because it would be like, which, yeah, if it went around three times, Then we would just get terms, you should be like gamma wedge, gamma squared. If, if, like if just by gamma to n, I mean a loop that goes around n times. Yeah, that at the end they have to, mm -hmm. Hope, yeah, but yeah, okay, maybe, maybe this is not correct. But, mm -hmm. So in general, it, yeah, obviously it's, it's infinite dimensional, the, the, the algebra in, in most cases. And I, there are still some open questions about it. Like, I, I, I don't know whether the center is known. So I, but what is known? So I'll write a theorem. 
is by Goldman, who defined the bracket, and Turayev, who defined the co-bracket, and check that it's a Liba algebra, and then also Moira Chas, check that it's involutive. So uh, let me write it. A G T is an involutive Li by algebra. Okay? So let me recall what is an involutive Li by algebra. So if you have a vector space A with a map A which A to A, and then a delta which goes from A to A which A, then this is a Lie by algebra. If this satisfy the following, so the bracket is a Lie bracket. Delta is a Lee co bracket, so I will draw, write this explicitly. So you take an element, and you apply delta on it, and then you apply delta on again on the on the first first component, for example. Okay. Sorry. Yes. And now you do the following. So, so, so here you get a result in A. Uh, sorry, I got I got I got confused. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So I'm 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 slightly confused, but you try. So you act with the identity map, plus you act with a with a permutation like this, plus you act with a permutation like this. The yeah. This is the Kojakobi identity, and this should be equal to zero. And then you need a compatibility condition between these two. Which says that if you first act with the bracket on two things, this is the same as the following expression. For example, this is an element of A which A, and you can act as you act on tensor products with with, with that action. One of, on the second plus on the on the first plus on the second. Well, I for me it's enough to just take non grade it in this in this in this case. So there's no sign. There's no sign, yeah. Okay, so for, so far so until here it's a leap by algebra. Mm -hmm. So, this is an element of A which A. Yeah, and so on this you can act by. So you know what's A D X just as a map from A to A. This is just bracket with X. Sorry. So on A. Which A, you just define it as ADX tensor 1 plus 1 tensor ADX. Yeah, now I'm not sure. 
Sorry, yeah, now I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. No, okay, no, I think it should be fine, right? Because like, let's act on e wedge f, so we get sorry e wedge f gets sent to x e wedge f plus e wedge x f. But this should be equal to minus f which e, which gets sent to minus x f which e minus f which x e, which which is equal to this. So it's yeah, it's compatible with the action. Okay. And so the theorem says that it's an involutive Lie algebra. So the involutivity is just the following condition that if you first act with delta and then you act with the bracket, then you get zero. Right. Here, in the definition of a Lie algebra, you have first bracket and delta. And the other way, that this is something more. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is anti symmetric. It's anti symmetric. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now I want to explain how is this topological object related to flat connections on surfaces. So we choose a group G. Yeah, it should be connected. I think that's enough. And, and we look at the space of all flat G bundles, modulo gauge transformations. Principal G bundles. Modulo flat. Uh, sorry, modulo gauge transformations. So it's a bundle with a cho choice of a flat connection. This flat bundle is a bundle with a choice of a flat connection. Yeah. Yeah, it is just to have, so we also can have non trivial bundles. Or, so this may be, one can even say that this, this, this will be our definition that you look at the space of all, all morphisms from the fundamental group, you choose some base point to G, and then you You quotient out by the action of G, and the action of G it it conjugates each each element here. So if you have a map, then G acting on such a map is defined as. Where this phi goes from pi one sigma x to g. 
This is also, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Uh, I understand that if this is the parallel transport, roughly. Yes. Mm -hmm. But but how do you see the non-trivial bundles in this picture? Uh, sorry, I I don't really know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that is, sorry. That is that's the best I can say. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I can I can try to check. It's all yeah. Okay, but also this is also known as character variety, maybe you heard, heard that name. But let me give you an example. So, we take a once punctured torus, then, then if we choose two paths on the torus like this. Let's call them gamma one and gamma two. Then yeah, it's a non-trivial statement, but it's true that, that the moduli, this moduli space is, is then isomorphic to just G cross G, sorry. G cross G modulo the simultaneous conjugation. And you should just view, view this map, which goes from here to here, as you take the holonomy along, along gamma one and holonomy along gamma two. So this is. Okay. But, and these holonomies, they are only defined up to gauge transformations. Up, up to conjugation in this point, which is yeah, the gauge transformation. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so conjugation, you mean uh, uh, deform, deforming the path? Oh. No. no mm. No, conjugation is just, so you act with an element of G. So for example, here, you just, this is an element, so, okay, let me just write it explicitly. G1, G2 would be sent by some element H to H, G1, H inverse, H, G2, H inverse. This is, this is the action here. It's like taking traces of holonomies, like Wilson loops maybe or something in physics, I don't know. So yeah, well, what Tomas is saying is that, 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 that if this was a matrix group, then the tra trace would be well defined, even though the element itself is not well defined, it's only up to conjugation. Mm -hmm. this is Okay, and why is this space interesting? It's because it has a Poisson structure, naturally. So this is a theorem. So Atia both. Maybe Goldman. That if we if we fix an element here, so this is second symmetric power of the, of the Lie algebra of the Lie group, so this Lie algebra G, and it should be invariant, okay? So you should just think of an inverse of the scaling form, that this is a good example. So very important. Then the moduli space has a natural bivector 
I, you know, let's call it at the abort, and it's a Poisson by vector. Okay. And now we can connect back to the to the Goldman to Rayleigh Lie algebra. So we so the, we have two Lie, we have two, sorry we will only connect to the Lie algebra part because we have two Lie algebras. One of them is just functions on the moduli space. Because this has a Poisson structure. And there is this Lie algebra GT. If we forget about the co bracket, we just take the bracket. And there is a map, and it's It's defined as follows. So here you, the elements are linear combinations of homotopy classes of loops. So you just take, on a loop, you define it as follows. So you take the trace of the holonomy along the loop. So this is a function on the moduli space. For any any flat connection, you get you get a, a number if you plug it, to plug the flat connection here. And now, this, I, this is, if the G, the group, is GLNR, this is a map of Lie algebras. I have two questions. Uh, one, isn't it a symplectic uh, manifold on the right, or a symplectic Poisson structure? Mm, only if the surface has no boundary. Otherwise, you know, there is this construction where you, f when you fix the, con the conjugacy class along the boundary, and there is this kind of Hamilt Hamiltonian reduction. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what happens if the group is not GLN? So then you can, then the, the bracket the rule changes there. The, so the definition here, uh, of the Lie bracket, so you can change it to, change it to accommodate for a different, for a different, basically different structure constants of the group. Mm, so I don't remember the details, but there is a list in the paper by Goldman where he lists all the, like, um, uh, so it's for GLN, SLN, uh, SON, and also the symplectic group, if I remember. I, but yeah. I, it's, it's better to look in, in the paper of, of Goldman, there is a, there's a, there's a list. Okay, so obviously there is something missing, the, the co-bracket has no interpretation so far. And that's what our goal is, to give an interpretation to the co-bracket. And I will describe the ingredients we will need. So first, there is this, uh, yeah, there's a, an observation. That if you have a involutive Lie by algebra, then you can take the wedge of A, and you can define a, an operator here. Okay. 
where so remember that the, that bracket is a map from a which a to a so you you extend it on i write, okay i should write bigger so you this bracket is extended as a second order differential operator on 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 this space okay uh, I can write a formula, so if you act on A1 wedge until AN, you get sum. So you, you sum over all pairs. And here you repl you just, yeah. And you just choose a I A J This is uh, this is the way second order differential operator act act, act. they have, they have two der derivatives and they choose all possible uh, uh, letters from a monomial And with the with the delta which is a map like this, you just extend it as a derivative. Okay, and the claim is now that this delta squares to zero for involutive Lie algebras. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so first you extend this this thing to a map from wedge of A to wedge of A. So maybe I will write down. So this is extension to a map wedge of A to wedge of A. Okay? So yeah, the delta you also extend. This one is yeah, this one is easier. Just extend as a derivative, and then you st you add th these two maps, and then delta squares to zero. Okay. Yeah, that I have to. Ah. Okay, so so what we get this way is, is something called BV algebra. So it's this algebra with the wedge product and the and the second order differential operator delta. Okay. So this is one thing we need, and another one is we will need super, super groups instead of just groups. So let me this way. So I will give you an example of a super group we will use most often. And an example we'll take, so QN, this is the, this is the, is the algebra 
of 2n by 2n matrices of the form like this. I should write bigger, OK? And this algebra is Z to grade it. If these matrices are even, and the anti-diagonal matrices are odd, but it's only Z to grade it because this product of the two matrices like this is a matrix of this form. So. So it's just Z2, not Z graded. Okay. And so that it's isomorphic to, to, the, to just GLN tensor with the following algebra. And the isomorphism is. So the, just I'm just yeah that is nothing complicated. There's a multiplication rule here and here is the same. Because, yeah. because two things which have epsilon in front of them, they combine into a thing without an epsilon in front of them. Okay, but this algebra is not commutative. It's not graded commutative. Because in a graded commutative algebra, epsilon is square to zero if, because it, it's odd. Okay, so, so this is just this is just associative algebra. So we can take the corresponding Lie algebra of this associative algebra, and this is the the queer Lie super algebra. It's one of the it's one of the, the algebras you come across when you do the, classi in the classification of Lie superalgebras. It's called queer. And it has a, there's a function on this algebra defined as follows. So it's a trace of x plus epsilon y is defined as trace of y. And such function, it, it defines an invariant pairing. So if, um, maybe if A, no, E and F are elements here, you can send them to the odd trace of E times F, and this is invariant, non-degenerate, uh, symmetric, and odd pairing on QN. Okay. It's a if you just if we would just take the trace of the matrix, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you would take the if you would take trace of x, it would be not invariant.
you. Okay, so there was, this was least super algebra. You can look at the corresponding least super group, which would be just the invertible elements of the, of the associative algebra QN. So QN invert. And now I can state our theorem. So if G is a supergroup and G, the least superalgebra, has a pairing like that, so as a non-degenerate invariant symmetric odd pairing, then the moduli space of flat G connections, yeah, mm -hmm. has, a B, has a natural BV structure. Oh, yeah, because now it is a super manifold, so I don't want to write C infinity. Just, it's a natural BV operator. Oh, sorry, and here I forgot one thing. That we need, we need uh, G to be unimodular. That's to say for all X, the trace of the operator at X is zero. This is trace in the in the Lie algebra itself. But the is super yeah. Mm -hmm. So the um, the odd, no. Okay. The question was so now G is a super algebra, but here you just take a thing which is usually called super trace. You take the if 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 you have an operator which has block that form like this, you take trace of this minus trace of this. Ah, okay. S trace, mm -hmm. good. But it, yeah, it's it's not the odd trace. Odd trace is a function from, is an odd function on G. This is uh, this is something that acts on endomorphisms of a odd vector space. Okay. So this is the first part of the theorem, and the second part. Second part says that if we if we take Q n for the for the group then we get a similar situation as we as we had for the Goldman bracket. So there was uh, so now we take wedge G T with the BV operator. Remember, we had a Lie algebra, so on which we constructed a BV algebra structure. And now, functions on the moduli space also have a BV operator. And if you define a func define a map, which is defined as follows, so a loop gamma is sent to the function odd trace of the holonomy along gamma. Then this is a map of BV algebras. So 
So you, here, we, here we define it on generators, and then it's, it's extended as a map of algebra. So which of two functions is, which of two loops is sent to product of two functions? Really just product as, yeah, as, as you multiply functions in a super manifold. Okay. On, on the right, they are anti commuting then because it's a supergroup or what? Because on the left here, it's anti symmetric, right? Yes. So that's why you need odd trace because then this will be an odd function. So he, he, here, right? So this. These, these gammas, they live in degree one, or degree odd, so it's maybe better, it's better to say that these are odd, so you want to send it to an odd function, but odd trace of a, of a holonomy is an odd function on the moduli space. Okay, and maybe I have, I have five minutes, so I would want to try to make a relation with the previous talk. It's, it's, like, it's, all, it's not a big relation, but these pictures look similar. So, so one of the questions you can ask is, yeah, basically what Thomas already asked in the, in the Atia bot case. So for which groups does this work? So yeah, here, we, I only, only said it for QN, but there's a slightly more general statement. So, so. What property of QN makes this work? Okay, so again, the construction was we had an associative alge algebra, which now I will just call it Q, so this will be Z2 graded associative. And and it, it it has to have an odd, some kind of function odd trace, which is odd and induces an invariant symmetric pairing, as before. Induces. And then you can look at the Lie algebra and the Lie group and do the same construction. And it will turn out that, that to get a compatibility with basically with the co-bracket, you need a following identity in the algebra, okay? So, so I need to write it as follows. So this is the inverse of the pairing, okay? Where I chose some basis of the Lie algebra G. Okay? And now the identity is that for all x in Q minus one to x times EI, these are degrees, T i j e i times x times e j is equal to odd trace of x times the identity of the algebra. Okay, so th this might look kind of random. <laughs> so let me draw it as a pictorial identity. I use also from bottom to top. So this is our x, an element of q. Now we use t. So this is a map, a map from nothing to g tensor g. Right? And now what you do here, you exchange x with e, that you get a sign and they get into this, this order. And then you multiply them all together using the multiplication of the, of the algebra q. And you get something in Q, and this should be equal to the following thing. You just take this X, you use the odd trace, let's call it for example like this, and then you just multiply it by the identity. Usually your identity is, written, is drawn like 
Yeah, it's something that goes from nothing to Q. So this is the identity. Okay? And now the last picture. But maybe let me draw it. No, straight line with the identity. Yeah. So let us let us now think that Q is a matrix algebra. So instead of lines, I will draw ribbons corresponding to the two indices of the matrix. So and now I want to redraw this picture. Maybe the the right hand side is easier. It's just this is the trace. You, know, you sum over i. There is, these, these indices have to be the same, and this is the identity matrix. So this is the right hand side. And on the left hand side, you start with x. Then you have this thing. Now we multiply them, and multiplication of matrices is. You just have you just say that these two in indices that are next to each other are the same. And you get again a matrix with two indices, the outer ones. And now if you look at it, so we have a stupid name for this thing called it's called discard the identity. Because first this is a picture that appears in the card the identity. Right, you could draw as a surface if you look at, look on it as a surface. It would be the uh, like this. It's, it's, it's the following surface. It's like a cylinder with two open strings at both ends, and what this says that it says that you can forget about the the two D part of the surface. So, yeah, this, so this identity tells you that when you pull them apart, is this, you, you, you get the same, same map as if you forget about the, 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 the surface part of the surface and you only keep the boundary. Okay. So yeah, I will end here. <laughs>